hydrophobic effect. So water molecules are highly polar. And not only are they highly polar, but they're also great at hydrogen bonding. You have an electronegative atom, in this case oxygen, it's got two lone pairs, those can act as acceptors, and then you've got two hydrogens that can act as donors. And so water molecules like to form hydrogen bonds, and they like to form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. And what's great too is that because water has those kind of like four different sites, no matter where it turns, if it's in water, like bulk water, the water's gonna be happy, it's gonna find something that it can hydrogen bond to. And it can move around while it's doing so. And so it's got high, you can have high entropy, the water molecules moving around, but then you also get the enthalpic benefits because you're able to make those favorable hydrogen bondings basically wherever you turn. It's like you're doing a swing dance in a room of really hot people. No matter where you move, you're gonna see hot people, but you still could be moving around in the process. Now I want to for imagine that the blob monster comes to town. Uh-oh, you've got something that is nonpolar, something that's hydrophobic. It's hydrophobic not because it fears water, but because water wants nothing to do with it. Think about this, no hydrogen bond donors, no hydrogen bond acceptors, doesn't have any charge, it's total blah. So if you stick it in the water, well, it's not like all the water can just move all the way around from it, you've got a constrained area. So the water can't just all go away. What's going to happen is the water is going to team up around it. It's going to say, okay, maybe I can't form my maximum number of hydrogen bonds, but I can still form hydrogen bonds with you guys. If we cinch around it, let's kind of maximize our interactions with one another, and then we'll make it so that we can have the best, the best, make the best of what we got. And so what's going to happen is that these water molecules are going to kind of be tied up around here. These water molecules that are surrounding is kind of the shell, kind of like if it's like one of those skins, if you have this liquid and it kind of like sits for a while, you get that skin. That's kind of like that. That's what's happening. You have this basically, you've got the shell here, and all this water is free to move around. But now you've taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten water molecules out of commission, out of the bulk water in order to surround this. Now imagine a second blob monster comes to town. You've got a second hydrophobic thing. What's going to happen if you put it in here, and now we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten water molecules that are taken out of here. Now these kind of two, they're like, okay, well, what if we can actually lose less water if what we do is we push these together? So what happens is that these are going to get pushed together and now you only need a smaller number of water molecules to surround them. And so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 water molecules. We freed up all these water molecules and these water molecules are now in this bulk water. And so they're hanging out. They have entropy. They have these high entropy. You freed all those water molecules by pushing these nonpolar things together. It's not that the nonpolar things were attracted to one another and were like, oh, I want to hang out with you. No, it's like the water molecules don't want to hang out with it. The water molecules want to hang out with other water molecules, and they can hang out with the most other water molecules if they push those nonpolar things together. But these water molecules around the nonpolar things are kind of stuck in place because if they're they're in an arrangement that allows them to form the maximum number of hydrogen bonds, but they can't avoid the fact that there's a nonpolar thing on one side of them. So they're kind of like tied together around there. And so this water is going to be tied and held in place because if it turns when I was breaking off those interactions, and if it turns over here, there's nothing like favorable that it can have. It can only have just kind of like those weak Van der Waals interactions, those dispersion forces type things. So what's going to happen is that this water is going to be stuck, this water is going to be free. And there's more water freed up when you push these things together. So by pushing the hydrophobic things together, by pushing those non things together, you're freeing up the water. The free water is free in this bulk water. It can move around. It's got high entropy. Voila. Happiness. Entropy is driving this hydrophobic effect. This is going to be a driving force of various sorts of properties, including protein folding. You've got things that are amphiphilic, so we've got parts that are hydrophilic and parts that are hydrophobic. What's going to happen is that they're going to arrange themselves in a way that the hydrophobic parts are going to be in the center, hidden in 
um, kind of bond to one another, similar to what we have here, but now we also have hydrophilic parts on the outside. And so when we have a protein pool, the hydrophobic parts are often going to end up in the center, and the hydrophilic parts are going to be out here. By doing this, you minimize the amount of water that has to be in contact with those hydrophobic things, which makes it, because remember out here, if the water molecule turns, it finds another water molecule or it finds something that's hydrophilic. And so either of those are kind of good. But these nonpolar things, it would be stuck in place around here. So by pushing them together, you're freeing up more water. And this is going to help the drive the protein to fold in a certain way. The hydrophobic effect also plays a role in when we think about small molecules like drugs binding to proteins. Often you'll have a protein and it's got a hydrophilic outer surface, but then it's got a kind of hydrophobic pocket. The water in that hydrophobic pocket is going to be stuck in place, whereas the water over here, well now it's like, okay, I can hang out with water or I can hang out with you, either's good, let's chill, but these are going to be stuck. But what happens is that you have another hydrophobic molecule, say you have another one of those amphiphilic molecules where part of it is going to be hydrophilic. Well, now it takes that place of the, the waters and it freed up these waters, it frees up waters that now can be having interactions with the bulk water. These are high entropy. So the entropy was driving the interaction, the entropy was driving the force and together these nonpolar regions. It's not that the nonpolar regions are like, I want to be with you. Is that the water was like, I don't want to be here, I want to be out there. By pushing you together, I can be out there. So, hydrophobic effect, entropy. You're freeing water that would have been tied up surrounding those hydrophobic things by allowing them to be free. And the way they can be free is by pushing the nonpolar things together, minimizing the surface area that needs to be taken to cover, that needs to be covered by the water in that structured water, in that stuck water that shell of a water, that skin of a water. And you have more water in the form that is going to be doing that swing dancing. So hydrophobic effect, thank goodness this board was magnetic because I realized like I was on like cutting out all these magnets, like, oh my God, what if this board is a magnetic? It was magnetic. So hopefully it helped my students too. And so hopefully it also helps you.